you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we praise your name right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. For another day, another Mother's Day, God. Bless every person that's watching. Bless every person that's listening, oh God. To this anointed, talented young woman, oh God. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you so much, Sister Leah. We appreciate that beautiful selection. Amen. Praise God. May the Lord continue to bless you on today amen praise god thank you lord oh god we thank you right now as we come before you with the word on today god we just want to thank you for what you're doing on this mother's day as we prepare to bring the word oh god thank you for those that are watching on start meeting thank you for those that are watching on facebook thank you for those that are watching on youtube oh god Oh, Father, by any means necessary, God, as we share the word on today to encourage mothers and their children everywhere. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. And I want to make sure, praise God, everyone can hear me clearly, see me clearly. Amen. I am Apostle Loretta Williams. So glad, amen, to be coming to you on today. Praise God, this beautiful Amen. Mother's Day in 2023. Amen. And I want to talk about, amen, <laughs> what, what mothers have to do to get some love and appreciation. Amen. I first want to go to Proverbs chapter 14. I'm going to give a couple of scriptures, but I also want you to share this with your families, with your children. Amen. Because Mother's Day is supposed to be a tribute to women, to mothers. And a lot of them are not just birth mothers. A lot of them also, uh, amen, are spiritual mothers. I'm a birth mother. I birthed forth two children. I have four grandchildren. Three of them are adults. And I believe, if I'm counting right, I have one, two, four great-grandchildren. Amen. By the three oldest grandchildren who are sons and daughter of my son. So I'm grateful that I have lived long enough to be able to share some words to encourage you as mothers that maybe you didn't birth forth children. I'm a spiritual mother, an apostle, a pastor, amen, a prophetess of God. Worked in evangelism for many years in the church. So I have some knowledge. But above all, I ask God for wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Here in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse number 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Mm. Verse 2, I'm going to read a sheet. It says, He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despise him. Verse 3, In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Amen. What does a woman, a wife, a mother, need to get some love and appreciation. Let me tell you, at the top of my list, you need some wisdom. You need to be a wise woman. Because if you're not, if you're one of these foolish women, you're going to tear down everything before you can get it built up, before, amen. I have made so many mistakes in my lifetime. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. But I'm striving for perfection. I'm a work in progress even at my age. God is still perfecting some things in me. 
Amen. Praise God. But my desire is not to be a foolish woman. My desire is to be wise. I want to be a wise woman. I want to be a wise mother. Amen. Because let me tell you something. Our children, amen, know when we make mistakes. And a lot of times we're not willing to acknowledge that we messed up. And then they see by our example the things that we do and they follow in the same footsteps. footsteps. And that's not what I want for my children. I want them to excel. I want them to be better. That's something that my mother, amen, told me. You can do better. You can be better. It wasn't something that she was saying to make me feel bad. It was something she was saying to inspire me. Amen. Praise God. And let me tell you, it was a top of the list because my mother did have a college education. She did graduate from high school. Amen. Praise God. And she was full of grace. And that's some of the attributes I'm going to share with you women. Amen. Praise God. Because if you want some love and appreciation, you've got to give them a reason to love you. You might say, well, they just should love me because I'm their mother. It don't work like that. Amen. Praise God. Listen, when we fall in love with another human being, we don't love them just because they are man. We don't love them, amen, just because, amen, praise God, or they look good. Because if you do, you want them foolish women. You should love them for their traits, their character, their behavior, their attitude, the things that they're able to do. Amen, praise God. That's why you should love them. Amen. You should love them them amen praise god for who they are and not who you trying to make them be oh let me tell you amen praise god so i want to talk about this because it said every wise woman you build your house now you got to take time to build your house your house and so many of us women we so busy finding fault with everybody else we ain't got time to get our stuff straight amen praise god and before you can tell somebody else how to raise their children you first need to look at what are you doing with yours now i'm not saying your children gonna rise up to be perfect because mine have made mistakes mine have done things that i'm not pleased with i'm not happy with amen praise god and they know it but i can't dwell on that because the one thing i know i taught them better you better hear me evangelist fern i taught them better so if you in jail you incarcerated you in prison like my son is yeah i'm gonna tell it like it is it ain't my fault it ain't mama's fault because you know what you were grown you know right from wrong Amen. Praise God. You were taught right from wrong. So you knew what you was doing when you did it to get you in that situation. So ain't no sense in blaming mama. Ain't no sense in blaming daddy for the mistakes we make. Amen. Praise God. But you still should love and appreciate them for training you and teaching you what's right. You know when you go out there to the club and get drunk or you go to the bar to have a drink and you get overly intoxicated, you know you was raised better than that. You know better. But you do it anyway because you feel sorry for yourself. You do it anyway. Most of the time when people get drunk, amen, get high, amen, start doing things that they know they shouldn't be doing, it's because they feel sorry for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're angry. They're angry because they're in a situation they feel like they can't change. You may have lost your job. You may have been rejected in a relationship. Oh, I'm preaching good on today. Amen. And sometimes rejection and abandonment comes. It's not that person saying they don't love you. Let me straighten something out here. Every woman has a choice. Now here in the state of Texas, it's illegal to have an abortion <laughs> and if a doctor performs an abortion and is not essential to the mother's health I'm talking about she could die without them taking that baby it's illegal they will find the doctor and imprison them even it's illegal here they just passed that law uh, either in 2023 or last year but it's illegal they have taken away the right for women to decide for themselves 
whether or not they want to have a child. They've taken that away here. But let me say something to you. A lot of women gave up their babies and it wasn't because they didn't love the child. They loved you enough, amen, to carry you full term. You weren't aborted. Oh, Lord, help me teach on today. You weren't aborted because you could have been aborted for whatever reason. Sometimes the mother and the father feel they're too young to have children. Sometimes they look at their financial situation and they just say, we can't afford to have a baby. Sometimes they're selfish and they just don't want children, even after the fact that the woman has become pregnant. Or, even in a worse scenario, the man already is married and don't want to, amen, give up his wife. And so he tells that mistress, you got to get rid of that child because I'm not, I'm not going to take care of another baby. See, there's a lot of reasons. There's two sides to every story. Then we have these women. I go back in the day. Great grandma. Grandma. Amen. They were teenagers. They were young. I'm talking about in my family. <laughs> they were young when they had their babies. Amen. Praise God. Because back then, girls got married at 14. 13, 14, some of them, as soon as they uh, started their menstrual cycle, they were married. Like the situation with Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was a spouse to Joseph. Amen, praise God. She wasn't asked, and if she was asked, the decision was still made that you're going to marry Joseph. And that's why Joseph had a problem when he saw that she was pregnant because he said it ain't mine. I haven't been intimate with her. And so he had a decision to make whether to marry, continue because there was already betrothed. Am I going to raise somebody else's child? Oh, I tell you there's two stories to every, 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 uh, there's two sides to every story. Joseph had to make a decision. He wasn't that much, let me tell you, he was not that much in love with Mary. And she was a good woman, a young woman, a beautiful woman. But when he saw, she came back from visiting her Aunt Elizabeth, full of child, he knew he didn't do it. And he was angry. He was mad. <laughs> Amen, praise God, because he felt betrayed. Now, on the other hand, here's Mary's dilemma. She knows she hadn't been with anybody. She know the angel of the Lord had told her that she was highly favored and blessed among women. Yeah, he did. Go read your word for yourself. The Lord told her that he was going to bless her to conceive, even though she was a virgin and knew no man. So that's Mary's side of the story. That's a side everybody don't want to believe because it just is not natural. No, this was a supernatural occurrence. And it wasn't one that the people was willing to believe, even though it was in the Bible. It was in the Bible that the Messiah was going to be born of a virgin. It was in the Word. But they didn't believe it. Just like a lot of people don't believe you. Amen, praise God. You may not have had a virgin birth, but many women were molested. They were raped. And they got pregnant. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it today. Amen, praise God. And for whatever reason, they loved you enough to still have you. Even if they gave you up for adoption. Yeah, I, I'm hot. This is some hot word here. It's making me sweat. <laughs> Even if because she may have been 13, 14. If you've seen the story of Aretha Franklin, did you see the movie? You need to watch it. She wasn't no woman when she had her first child. She was a child. A young girl when she had her first child. There are so many entertainers, amen, that had children way before they got married. Way before, amen, they met the man of their dream, the husband of their dreams. Imagine having a baby at 13, 14. You're still a baby yourself. Your body may have developed 
enough for you to get pregnant and have a child. Your body developed, but this didn't. Your mind. Your mind. You still think like a child. You still act like a child. Not only that mother, but that father too. Amen. Because he can barely take care of himself. Now he's faced with the responsibility of having to feed, provide, protect, and take care of a baby. And yes, many of them saying, I'm not going to do that. Many of them will even deny and say, that's not mine, even though they know they slept with you. They know they did. And if they sleep with you, whether you use protection or not, you're still capable of conceiving and having a child. You're still capable. There's a whole lot of babies been born, amen, praise God, and the mother and the father use protection. Hmm. It can happen. You can be barren. Ha <laughs> ha. I was told I wasn't going to have no more children. And I, hallelujah, was still married to my husband. We were separated, but we were still married. And lo and behold, hallelujah, praise God, we cohabitated. <laughs> Out of agreement. Yeah, we did. And I got pregnant. After seven years of not having a child. When I wanted a baby, huh, when I wanted to hold a little one in my arms, the Lord didn't let me get pregnant. So I was upset. My daughter know the story. Ain't no shame to my game. I was mad. <laughs> I'm just beginning to look good, feel good. Amen. Got a good paying job. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm ready to tell this man you can go about your business because I'm going to be all right. And lo and behold. I come to find out I'm four months pregnant. Oh, God have mercy. Lord Jesus, that ain't what I wanted to hear. But see, God has a reason and a purpose for everything. And yes, I'm going to tell you, I question God. Why me? Why this got to happen to me now? <laughs> I'm working. I'm looking. At, that's why I got pregnant because I was looking all good and fine and, and you know. His desire was still towards me. And I was his wife. Amen. Praise God. So wasn't no sin in it. Because the Bible said marriage is honorable. And the bed is undefiled. Wasn't no sin in it. That's the first thing God let me know. That which is in you. Is of my doing. I'm so grateful. God gave me that little angel. And my mother told me the same thing about my birth. I was unexpected. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she raised some questions about having me. She told me. She told me. Amen, praise God. And she told me what the Lord said as well about my birth and the, the call that he had on my life. Many of you, many of you watching me, God got a special purpose for you being here. You may not understand it. You may not even believe it, but I'm telling you, God got a special purpose for you being here on this world. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Through your pain, through your tragedy, through your long suffering, hallelujah, God still got a divine purpose for you being here. And he has a divine purpose for your children. They may be locked up. They may be, amen, in a juvenile home. They may be, amen, praise God, uh, mentally incapacitated where they can't think for themselves. Some of you have children that are physically disabled, but God still got a purpose. And sometimes his purpose is not for that child. It's for you. Because, Lord, I don't even want to think about it. I didn't even have a desire to live. I was in that much agony, that much pain. That I didn't even want to live. God saw for. He saw fit. He knew I needed somebody to love me. He knew. So he gave me that child. He caused me to love her while I was carrying her in my womb. Even before I knew whether it was a boy or a girl. I loved her. I loved my baby. Amen. Praise God. And I determined that if I had to raise that child by myself, 
That's exactly what I was going to do with the help of God. And that's what a lot of you women have done. And that's why, children, you need to love and appreciate your mother. Because number one, she brought you into this world and she didn't have to. She didn't have to. For most women, it's painful. Labor and childbirth is painful. Oh my God, pregnancy ain't no joke either. You're so big, you're waddling, you can't fit your clothes no more. Lord, I couldn't even get in the bathtub and get out. My God. And then I had my daughter in the summertime. Hallelujah, it's hot. I'm bothered. Oh my God. And I'm big with baby. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I'd be so glad when this baby drop in the middle of July. That's when my daughter was born. Ooh, God, I'd be glad. I was hot. I could I ate ice cream. I put I had ice packs. Oh my God. It, it, you're miserable. And you don't understand that till you have a child. And I don't think men will ever understand it because you ain't in no labor pain. <laughs> you ain't the one whose belly is full. You won't understand that. You ain't the one that's crying out. Let me tell you, women be in so much pain, hallelujah, they say, I ain't never having sex no more. I ain't never getting pregnant again. Oh, I know, because I sure said it. And guess what? I ain't having no more either. <laughs> I'm not having this kind of pain no more. Uh-huh. Because, see, men don't understand that. They, they sitting there sometimes watching you, trying to figure out what they can do <laughs> but really ain't nothing they can do but hold your hand. Be that for you. Hallelujah. And then if you got some like I did, I told I had the nurse and, and his sister get him out the room. He is worrying me. He is bothering me. Amen. Praise God. He calling on the nurse. Do something for her. Help her. Oh my God. They come and they poking me with needles. I said, please. Grandma, <laughs> get him out the room. So he left, and then he came back. They called him when my daughter was born. Hallelujah, praise God, because a lot of men can't handle it. I know men that have passed out. <laughs> you ain't even having a baby, and they pass out. <laughs> they pass out in the delivery room. They can't stand it, and you're not the one in pain. Yeah. That's why you should love and appreciate your wife, the mother of your children, and children, you should appreciate your mother. You should love and appreciate her. Amen, praise God. We want to build our homes. We want to build a place where our children can come and find peace. And they ain't going to find no peace if you arguing, fussing, and fighting all the time. Hallelujah, praise God. You got to learn, women, to agree, not to disagree. Let them have the last word if necessary. But amen, praise God. Keep some peace. Be a peacemaker and not a peace breaker. Children scared to go home now. Amen. I went through it. My mother and father used to get to arguing. I crawl under the bread, under the bed, and I'd be praying for my daddy that my mama wouldn't kill him. <laughs> And my dad was a big man. But my mother did not play. Them little women, you got to watch them. <laughs> them little women, mm -hmm, they ain't going to argue. They ain't going to fuss. They going to get something in their hand and throw it upside your head. Hallelujah. We got some ideas around too. They'll throw some hot grits on you. <laughs> you better hear me. Hallelujah. They'll get you in your sleep. They'll put some x lax in your cake and serve it to you. <laughs> you better hear what I'm saying. This stuff Tyler Perry writing is the absolute truth. Because women will get revenge on you. And you better pray you get a God-fearing woman, amen, that's not going to mistreat you, amen, or take advantage of you or do something to you while you sleep thinking it's okay. Because that's what a lot of men do. A shame ain't going to do nothing. What you going to do? You so confident, but that woman is thinking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even if she a godly woman, she's still thinking about how can she change the situation she in. Because I did it. I 
did it. And I had to go get some help. I had to ask God to send me some help. Let me go some places, oh God, where I can get the help that I need. And I did. I started going to women's conferences, seminars, amen. Because sometimes you can talk to other women and, and that child, if I was, that was me, I wouldn't put up with that. I wouldn't take that. Well, don't cast stones at a glass house. Because you ain't in my situation. You're not going through what I'm going. And until you do, you don't know what you would do. And that's something the old mamas used to tell us. Don't never say what you won't do. Because, honey, you don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to act when you get in a situation that is not pleasant, that hurts. Or, and, ooh, let me tell you this, especially when they're messing with your children. Because, see, that tiger, that tigress I was thinking on today as the Lord was giving me the lesson. You know it's the lioness that hunt? <laughs> do you know that? It's the lioness that go out and hunt for the food. And they'll tell you any forest preserve, an animal preserve, will tell you that if you see a baby, somewhere the mother is around lurking. You may not see it. Even if it's a baby bird, usually unless the mother is dead, that animal, that eagle, that hawk, mm -hmm, that raven, that tigress, that bear, that goat, that somewhere that mother is around. She may, <laughs> this is good. She may just have wandered off. She may just have went to tend to the others. And she come back and there you are. Messing with her baby. Like I tell my grandson, my youngest grandson, no pet pet no one. <laughs> Don't pet it. And he's still hard headed. So, amen. I was told recently. He went to one of the theme parks, and his mama was talking to the security of the gate. And here come this animal, because his name is Noah. Here come this animal up to Noah. And what do he do? The very thing Grandma told him not to do. Pet, pet. And he got bit. <laughs> yeah. He got bit. Well, hard head make a soft behind. Because a lot of times, children think we don't know what we're talking about. Amen. So they don't listen. And they have to find out for themselves. And that's why you should love and appreciate your moms. When they tell you, my mom used to tell me, put, put a hat on your head. Y'all heard that one? I'm, I'm from Chicago. Girl, go back in the house, get a hat on your head. Go put your sweater on. Oh, mom. Uh-huh. But let me tell you something. You get that cold up in your head. Get that cold up in your body. And when you get older, Arthur and Rumi is coming calling. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't listen when mom said, cover up. Cover your head. Even the children, not just the girls. Go, go, go put a shirt on. It's hot. And I know it be hot here in Texas. But you still got to know, cover up your pores. Don't go outside. I tell the preachers, hey amen, see me sweating? I'm sweating. I got two camera lights on. Amen, praise God. I ain't going outside with my pores all open. And it's 80, 90 degrees here in Texas. But I got to wait, let my pores close up. Hello. So that I don't catch a cold. And that's what a lot of times you do. Go outside in a wet shirt. Ooh, it's hot. Hallelujah. Women dealing with hormones, all of this stuff. And then you leave your body unprotected. And you get sick. Let me quickly tell you about 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to name some traits here of why you should love and appreciate your mother. Mothers should love. Ain't nothing like a mother's love. Out of all the people that have been in my life, I'm going to have to say it. Nobody loved me like my mother. Not my husband, not my father, not my brother, not even my children. Because see, my mother was willing to give up her life for me. A lot of women, before, during childbirth, some die 
like Rachel did in the Bible, giving birth to Benjamin. Childbirth is dangerous. There's no promise that you're going to live. There's no promise that the child may even live. You both could die. Sometimes the father has to make a decision to either let the child live and let the mother die. Or let the mother live and the child die. I'm not going to tell you what to do in that situation. And neither is the doctor. Because it has to be your decision that you got to live with. Again, there's two sides to every story. Why did my mother love me enough? Why did she have to die? Listen, my mother was 70 years old when she died. And I still don't understand why God had to take her from me. But she was ready to go. She was ready to go when she left here. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Amen. Praise God. It's not always your choice. It's between that individual and God. Whether they should live or they should die. But some of us are so selfish. Ah, now I'm going to pray my mama through. And she's suffering. She in pain. She's hurting. She's going through. She's literally a physical vegetable. Her mind has shut down. Oh my God. She's in a nursing home. You don't go see her. You don't call her. You don't visit her. But you want her to stay alive. Oh, help me Jesus. Why? Why? So you can go once a year? You don't even have time to call and check on her. Why should she have to suffer when she wants to be at peace? Oh, this is a good word on today. That's love. A mother will, is willing to sacrifice. I was willing to sacrifice. I told God, if you got to take somebody, you take me. Yeah, I went through it. You take me, but don't take my children. Don't take my children. I've watched my children go through life and death situations. And that mother's love is so strong in me. God, you take me. Let them live. Let my seed live. Because, see, I've been blessed. I've lived a full life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I've done things that, amen, I wanted to do. And it don't mean that I'm just willing to lay down my life and die. But if it's necessary, I do just like Jesus. Father, I submit my will, my mind, my heart, and this physical body to you. That's love. The Bible says here in 1 Corinthians 